I'm Samantha B, reporting for Kids First, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Josephine Decker, director of the new film The Sky is Everywhere, which releases in select theaters and on Apple TV Friday, February 11, 2022. Josephine Decker, Decker is a director and actress known for directing the films The Wast, Midley and Lovely, Shirley, and The Sky is Everywhere, which we're discussing today. Hi, Sam. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to talk to you. I am excited to talk to you, too. <laughs> okay, so starting off. The Sky is Everywhere uses magical realism to help tell Lenny's story. Where did you t- look for inspiration for those scenes? Oh, great question. You know, I, I'm i really obsessed with the movie Amelie, um, which I saw back in, I think it came out in like 1999. And that's a movie by Jean-Pierre Jeunet that features a lot of very magical realist moments and animated moments and has a very specific style that has a wide lens often technique that we also use in our film. Um, and there's just a lot of energy in the film and as a whole, there's a lot of like quick movement. Um, and I... Um, I love Babe. Babe is one of my favorite movies of all time. So um, that's, I, that's not, maybe that's not even related. I'm like, <laughs> but but I also found a lot of inspiration for um, those magical realist moments because I, I come from a dance and theater background and I really wanted the whole film to feel like Lenny could have made everything with her own two hands. I didn't want it to be like super intense CGI animation. I wanted it to feel like when you're in Lenny's imagination, she could have built that world. Um, so it was fun to kind of, in the, in the rose garden, instead of having roses like be CGI, have the roses become like real people dancing around them with wearing rose costumes. And um, so, yeah, so that was kind of the concept behind a lot of the, the style. I love the magical realism. I thought it was really, really cool. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Now, music, especially classical music, plays a big role in the film. How did you view the role of music helping tell the story? I am obsessed with classical music. I grew up playing classical music. I played piano really seriously when I was young. And I think I felt like you can say things with the piano that it's really that, or with music in general that you maybe can't say with words. I mean, I think that's why we're all obsessed with music, right? It speaks so loudly and clearly, even though it's also like very mysterious. Um, So to have the opportunity to tell a story about two young people who are like obsessed with classical music was just such a gift. so yeah, so I think that was like a big, that was kind of uh, the first inspiration. And then I got to work with a terrific composer, Caroline Shaw, who um, she's one of my favorite composers of today. She's kind of what we call like new music, which is kind of classical music of now, I guess you could say. It's sort of instrumental, very brilliant, complex music. And uh, she did all of the score for the film. So we had a lot of fun translating then all of the like balancing all of that classical music that's already in the film with a score that would have touches, uh, influences from all that as well. Ooh. <sighs> the music in the film was really pretty. Oh, good. What was it like to work with the book's author, Jandy Nelson, on translating the book to screen? Oh, yeah. Have you read the book? I've started it. Oh, yeah, no worries. No pressure. I was just curious. I, it's, you know... <laughs> She, she had actually already turned it into a script when I got on board. I read the script first and then I read the book and I was so obsessed with the script. It just felt like a whole rich world. There was like a really unusual family. There's this sister story at the center of it. And I'm really close to my sister and adore her. And also I was like always terrified of losing her. So I really understood, you know, I, I, well, I mean, you can never understand what it's like to lose someone until you go through it. But I really was like feeling the terror that Lenny and the terror and grief and just um, of going through losing somebody that you're that close to. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think with the book, you know, we, it's interesting because the, the um, what was the question, why did you want to make the movie or what from the book? I've heard so many questions today. I'm getting confused. Did you say, what was the question again? Um, what, how was it working with the book to make the movie? Oh yeah. So honestly, so since the script was already in existence when I got to it, 
I, and I was already in love with the script. I actually mostly just read the book and was like, oh, I love this line that you said, Jandy. Can we put this line somewhere in the movie? And I love this poem that you wrote, Jandy. Can we put this poem somewhere in the movie? I just like, <laughs> the script was already kind of long. And I was like, can we make it longer and put more of your amazing book into this movie? And, um, and we did, we added a few things, which was fun. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for talking with me. This was really fun. I love- Thank you, Sam. Oh, I'm so glad. That makes me so happy. I'm grateful. And thanks for, thanks for featuring us. I really appreciate you writing and, and, uh, and videotaping with us. Yeah. Thank you for talking with me, Josephine Decker. The Sky is Everywhere releases in select theaters and on Apple TV Friday, February 11, 2022. I'm Samantha Belford reporting for Kids First, and make sure you like and subscribe to our channel to stay informed about upcoming films. Thank you. Bye. And so much joy.